Hey guys, this is Maynard, your still bro. So today uh, we'll be uh, working on another live project of uh, structural design of G plus one building. The area is more, I'll show you more about uh, the project uh, now. So basically what we're going to do, we're suppose uh, you receive a CAD file of, a, you know, of an artificial plan of building from an architect. And after that, what are the steps which you can do for the structural design, the basic ones we'll see and show you. And the uh, design will include all the loads, uh, that is live loads, dead loads, and the you know earthquake loads. Since it is only G plus one, will not include the windows. And uh, and after that, we'll show you how to generate the basic drawings and also the estimate and uh, the uh, estimate report and the design report and other uh, things you need to submit if you are going to get it better from an authority. Because as a structural engineer, always uh, you know. Uh, once you complete um, your design, it, you have to send it to some authority for vetting. So, for example, in India, you, there are various, you know, this IITs and IITs and other uh, engineering colleges. They, uh, you know, these professors in them, they do the vetting work uh, and uh, they obviously charge a particular amount. So, this is common in uh, all civil engineering departments across all colleges. They have a consultancy department where they do the vetting works. So uh, for that, and also if you're applying for municipality approval or something like this also, then, then also you need to submit a design reports. So this will show you. And uh, uh, we already have a lot of videos related to civil engineering uh, design and execution on the channel. Uh, make sure if you are visiting for the first time, you subscribe to the channel. And also if you have any suggestions regarding what are the you know, topics uh, which you want to make, uh, mainly to make your career in structural engineering, so you can just uh, comment below and definitely I'll try to respond. Okay. So let's get started. And uh, first of all, I'll show you uh, the project here. And uh, so basically this is the two floor building and uh, which you are seeing right now. So two story building and uh, in this two story building, uh, we need to make the you know CAD file. So I have my Tetla structural designer open and uh, this is the two-story building i made a copy of it because when i'm going to you know make the cad file i have to make a lot of changes to it so uh, that uh, so that's why you need to make a keep a copy okay so first of all you look at the floor area it is uh, it is 309 you know 0.15 square meter okay so these are the things here first of all i'll just select uh, the text here okay there's a ground floor plan and this is the first floor plan so i'll select the text here first and right click and select similar so my goal is to prepare, prepare the center line so i'm deleting it first of all okay so you know after i delete it and this is the you know ports area so don't need any structural members for that to we'll delete it and then also then again this one as well we'll delete and this these are the balcony portions we'll keep it uh when uh, we'll just you know just do the first floor plan so the ground floor plan and the first floor plan what we'll do we'll, we'll just uh you know the column position will be same the ground floor plan will import and the first floor plan will just rely on in the software to prepare the grid lines. So that's the best strategy. Otherwise, when you import both the you know different grid lines, there may be some problems which I have encountered. So as far as my experience, what we'll do, we'll prepare the separate grid lines for ground floor and first floor, but we'll import only the ground floor ones. Okay. So first of all, I'll I'll just uh, save this file here, uh, control plus S to save this file. And once I, you know, save this file, what I'll do is one with the folder in which I have the file, I'll just uh, make a copy of that as well. So I'll make a copy and I'll paste it. And this, in this, I'll write here, uh, first floor. Okay, FF means first floor. So I'll keep the first floor here. And uh, in, in this, I'll edit and make the down to center line. So first of all, uh, what I'll do, I'll just select the entire thing. And after selecting the entire thing, I'll put in zero there. Architectural plan, you know, uses many grids. So, you know, but uh, we don't, if you import have many grids in Tecla, that there is, see, that seems to be a lot of problems. So we we'll keep everything in one grid. And there are some problematic elements here that won't be, you know, converted into other, you know, grids. So for that, we'll, what we'll do, we'll just uh, take into this uh, zero layer. And again, try and make, keep everything in zero layer. So even in zero layer, you are seeing that some elements are not been converted into you know by layer. So for that, we need the column positions. So I'll just uh, draw the columns here. Suppose one column I've drawn, and I'll just select this and copy, and then paste it everywhere. Because my intention is to you know delete all the layers except the you know this uh, zero and uh, 
dev points. So like if you have many layers in Tecla, it will definitely create problems if we if you have large files. So this is where experience kicks in, right? When you are so we have done so many projects in a software, what happens is that uh, you can know all the glitches in the software. So you can you know exactly what to do. Okay. That's why it's important. You can learn other softwares, but definitely structural engineering, one software you cannot do. You have to learn other software, but one software should be such that you have a total amount of work. And uh, in my case, this is PhD. And uh, also I'll bring you my, some videos of, you know, ETAPs uh, as, as well, because uh, this design using ETAPs and SAFE because when you learn ETAPs, you learn SAFE as well because for the foundation to design, you have to go to SAFE. In PhD, one advantage is that, you know, you have the, uh, you know, this foundation design you can do, but in ETAPs, you have to learn SAFE as well. So I already have, you know, some videos on ETAPs, you can check that out. And uh, I'll also make a full video because full video is anyway better, you know, or I'll make another another course on it apps so that is so i think the place it from right select it move do it like this okay select this copy because then what happens is that like you have at least working knowledge of uh, uh, two or three software i think stat pro is also important because many companies will go there they're working in stat pro so that's why you have at least knowledge of three software tech lab for your advanced stuff and it has most commonly used software and then you are this stat also so stat one problem is that okay i'll just use ladle ladle this l-a-y-d-e-l -L. uh have you heard the name of the software uh, you know this command just click on name so this box pops up what happens is i select everything right everything i select the first one and i select the last one here and then control control i through the depth points because sometimes it's important okay so uh, selected everything click on okay and enter so you know every you know this uh, layers which are not useful to me they have been deleted i don't want them right okay so we are talking about this uh, you know software things and uh, if you follow my channel and definitely you know try to you know, follow me from earlier in this channel civil center also for my for my little company you know that i had made many videos there but uh, now in this uh, you know this is my own channel so here also i'll make uh, videos lots of videos on uh, everything which i can and uh, i have heard complaints that you know there are frequency has less because you know i have to do it with my job and other freelancing works as well and uh, as you might know that uh, this career in civil engineering uh, especially uh, only in india i'll say because i don't know about other places it's not that much rewarding so you have to you know do a lot of multiple things to you know just maintain your income so that's why what are the things regular videos but you know i'll try like i'll try to be regular right so i'm creating the center line i've created a center line layer and uh, i'm creating the center line here this i'll put in the center line layer but you know any comment or uh, from your guys uh, you guys like it uh, just gives a validation like whatever whatever i am doing if someone is uh, getting noticing it and getting benefited by it so it means a lot so just uh, learned anything or if you want more from me make sure you just uh, comment you know, right so this uh, small door things you know to actually you don't need now uh, if you want you can delete but you know, anyway, this is a lot of a lot of things to delete. So if you, if you don't want to delete, you can keep them as well. There is no no such harm in that. And okay. so these are the basic, you know, primary, uh, you know, what else? Primary 
beams center line so i'll just copy this to the uh, next one as well right So these are copied to the next one as well, and uh, I think now I, I need to copy it once again. This file, whatever FF I have named now, I just uh, delete it, and uh, this this one I'll copy again and I'll just uh, paste it here, or I can do it later also. Copy, copy. I just delete it later also. I'll, I'll need to work more actually before doing that. So uh, this ground front first floor, and uh, I'll work more. So let's create some more center lines. So the primary beams, that is the beams which have the column to column connection, all have been made. And there are some secondary beams like this, this end and this end. They don't have any column, so both are pinned, right? No column means pinned, and if your column means fixed, that's how it works. It's simply if, you, if I can explain. So uh, you know, just uh, create some primary secondary beams. Sorry, not primary secondary beams. So we're creating secondary beams. So just uh, I'll take this uh, center line and uh, I'll just uh, drop it here. So this is basically a four-inch one, and uh, I, I could have placed it you know anywhere, like in this end. But uh, you know the architect said that he may change it to five-inch one. So I am just placing it in center. But when you normal convention, you can just place the center line anywhere, like because normally the uh, you know, support, I'm okay. Let me talk in mm. Normally, this is a 125 mm wall. So, normal with it, and normally beam is minimum, uh, you know, is 50 mm width. I'm talking about the width. So, you can place it anywhere, it will go. But I'm placing it at the center. Okay. So, placing it at the center, you know, just uh, in case they want to increase the size, then my beam will come. So, that's why I'm placing it at the center. So, this one, uh, I need a center here. And this also has a Column and this there also. I'm placing a line here, and also let me go for the horizontal ones first. And, uh, here, here also I have one. Press space or enter. You know this command repeats. So I hope you know that. If you don't know that, you knew now. Huh? So that doesn't matter. So I think the vertical ones are over. Could I do the first floor one in, in parallel as well? I think I should do it. Okay. Yeah. This already has something. That is what Just escape. So any remaining things? I think okay, this one and another one. Okay. So anything remaining, I think we can do it. And these are the uh, smaller ones. So the smaller uh, ones we can delete later. We can place it anywhere. It will cover pretty much everything. So smaller ones, I don't think we need to do because okay. So this these are the uh, you know this. Uh, if we just just look at the width of here. Why I'm doing this? These are the two thirty mm. So that I told that they may expand it to fifty mm. So I don't know which way it'll go. So anyway, he goes. If I place it at the center, I'll be safe. And why I'm not? I don't need this. Uh, place it at the center. This is 115 mm. Target may change it to uh, you know 125 mm. So then also it doesn't matter because I'll just place it on one side. Other this side the center line. This side center line will cover. So if you have if you're not understanding it, don't worry. Uh, go into the detailed video. Then you'll understand like basic videos. And uh, if you want, uh, you can also you know contact me through my email, uh, which has been given in the video, um, something from below on the video. You can just contact me for tuition. Okay, no problem with that. So okay, let's see this. So I've selected this, and I'll just select copy. I'm selecting this and uh, midpoint, right? And here also, copy and go to the midpoint. And uh, then here also I need a line. Don't have any columns here. Copy.
right so we we'll have to check like if any any particular uh, wall is missing basically all the walls will have beams below them right so if you have anything missing so these are the proposed uh, five inch walls so for them so actually if you are watching it for the first time it will be difficult for you because this is i am working on light project i cannot do that much explanation right or explain explain tutorial videos if you watch my course on phd you will be able to do it right but this video like if you are uh, working on something and if you don't request to you know this uh, the cat file of this one because this is a project i cannot give you this cat file or uh, anything right uh, but you know i'll make a, a separate video where i i think i can give you the cat file right so the practice So like this, you can make the center line, but it will take some time. So I'll just uh, you know just pause the video and make it because otherwise it will be very boring, right? or video length will also be very high. So I'll just pause it and do it myself. Okay, so I have uh, made these you know center line for both the ground floor and the first floor. So now I what I'm going to do? First of all, I'm going to press Control plus S, and if you don't want to press Control plus S, then just go here. And uh, go click on save, right? Right? Or Control plus S, whatever you are comfortable with. So after doing this, what I'm going to do, I'm just uh, going to uh, this copy one. I'm just working on. So first, I'm going to paste here. This I'm going to uh, paste here first floor, right? So F F first floor. And this one I want to then save as uh, in this. Particular floor, uh, to give it a name here. And why is the name option not coming? I don't know. Okay, save drawing as they are supposed to give me a name option, right? Why is this not working? I don't know. So, okay, I'll just uh, save it and uh, close it, right? And uh, this. I will name as GF ground, right? So let me open that FF once again. In FF, uh, you have both one and then the GF, which I'll import in Tecla. Preparing for importing in Tecla will contain only the ground floor. So first floor you will delete. Okay. So in the GF, I'm going to write GF first floor you will delete. Only the ground floor you have. Okay. Save it once again. Control plus S. And after saving it, we'll just uh, use the command dxf out, right? dxf out. So once you press the dxf out command, just uh, use here uh, the actually this is supposed to give the name here, and where not going to do it, I don't know. Desktop, no, anywhere I'm not able to. Give the name of it. Why not? Okay, okay, it's coming. Sorry. We accept out, right? So that was the you know, window with what it got. File name GF DXF, and you can save it in anywhere. I'm preparing in 2000. You can open in any AutoCAD software. So you know, just click on save, right? DXF file has been saved. And once it is done, just uh, close the file. So once you close the file, uh, that need to open the Tecla structural design. And uh, first of all, just uh, prepare the levels. So uh, click on the new file. And uh, the new file, when you create, you should know the you know levels. So I'm just opening my level file. And I'll just uh, show you uh, so that I can show you uh, you know the levels what are the you know, these uh, levels which you which we need to give for the floor height reference where the foundation depth and all 
So I'm sharing the screen. Just wait a moment here. This is the uh, approximate level here. So as you can see, plane height is 600 and uh, below it, whatever the foundation goes. So let, let us take one more meter for the foundation or let's take 1.4 like factor of safety. Two meter from the bay in the plane level will be the foundation level. Let's take it. More if you take, no problem. And 3.3 is the floor to floor height, right? 3.3 is the uh, floor to floor height. And uh, basically, as uh, you see here, the lintel level is at 3.3 uh, and the first floor level is at 3.9. So technically, the floor to floor height is 3.9 for the first floor or what? Okay, let's see here. Zoom in. Okay, 3.3 is the floor to floor height in total. So we'll take 3.3 only. The toilet, they have uh, given, uh, you know, your... Uh, Sunken slab, as they call it. 3.3 is the flow height. So basically, this is 3.9 liter here, but 600 will minus uh, just subtract uh, 600 because 600 is the plane level. It will come as 3.3 .3 meters. And since this is, uh, if you just look at this, uh, this server rack, this is a G plus uh, one building, right? So G plus one building uh, and 3.3 uh, .3 meters height. So Let's uh, do this. Particular structure designer has been opened. New file. I've just clicked on new. First of all, what you want to do is save the file, right? Save as. So uh, this uh, just save it in whatever file you want. Tld one. I'm going to name it. Save this file, and this is your file for creation of your structure. Go to model. Go to construction models. Insert below. Always take base as the length of it. If you want to take not billion, minus two meter. Maximum we've taken 0.6 length height, 1.4 foundation depth, minus two. Okay. No problem. And after that, insert above. Insert above the skip SSL spacing. Give 3.3 meters. Source unique slab thickness, minimum slab thickness will be 175 large spans, large spans, huge spans, 175 mm. Okay, so this we have done G and G plus one. So there are two floors which you make and two floors levels done. And just click on OK. So once we click on OK, two floors are done. But next, what we need to do, we need to create the center line. Ground floor center line already we have created. Don't have to work on it. Let's just import it. If anything we have done wrong in the cat file, we are going to find it out now. And when you find it out, we can have the option of correcting them, right? So simply go to this option of uh, in the model in this option of import the Excel. Once you go, just import the ground floor uh, center line which you have created. So only the center line you selected. Okay. Then you select this architectural grids, unit demo we have done in MM, and then click on next and then buy here. Okay, import in only the foundation level and the plane level because above that, that will be the there will be the first two levels, right? But we'll do it later. Okay, just click on this uh, finish right now. Okay, just uh, finished, right? And after that, uh, go to import the Excel. And now it's time for the shadow. So in the shadow option, we start click on the shadow. Center line we don't want. And uh, unit is MM. Just click on finish, nothing to do. And what happens, you have to zoom. So you have to look where your, you know, this thing is hidden. So one small dot you are seeing, just take your mouse over this folder and keep on scrolling with your mouse. Appear slowly. Okay, these are the things which you work around with experience in the software. Any software which you're using, you might know. Now, once this is done, what you need to do is you need to place your columns. So the architect has already given some column size. So if you can be able to satisfy those size, then it's okay. Otherwise, I can request him that yes, sir, boss, this is not working right. Bro, this is not working. I need to change it. You can do that. 
but first of all you should we should try to accommodate within this student work and so right again change make some changes right 450 mm into 450 mm the science which not it is given let's see whether it passes by common sense it just seems that these spans are large so obviously we need larger columns here or the larger spans right so what first of all let's prepare the column just click on the column right and uh, here you don't need to do anything m to integrate complete we're using 450 to 450 let's give the size here for the columns right 450 and uh here 450 right and when you click on it just click on okay right and uh have the uh 500 already have included in the design settings so don't need to change that 500 is the steel and uh, just click on this automatic alignment off and anyway i'll just change it as well at the 500 at the 500 and after that i'll just save it and uh, name it c uh, 450 like cross 450 and after that click on okay so once you just uh, take this so once you I'll just click on the column once again something has happened let's click on escape rather right escape click on columns again and take the c450 to 450 just uh, place your columns at the center you can place it like this or like this as well i, I prefer like this because it's really faster second row there is no any column not any column so okay the span is definitely huge i don't think that would be pass at 250 what do you think can you in the comments that you do think that this will pass in 450 this is insane cannot pass with 450 columns so this is how it looks in the 3d view right click your mouse and rotate you know it so this is how it looks in the 3d view and uh, this to take a beam take this uh, beam set we have not yet defined any beam set so we can give the secondary beams. It's going to take some time. So I'm going to show you one beam and all the other and do it myself, right? That's a long video. Anyway, it will be a long video. I don't want longer spans. Okay. So we will just create a beam here. 15 to 500 seems a good size. Because it's a huge building, right? V 250 cross 500. That's my beam size. Okay. And uh, I'm going to use this V 15 to 500. We just uh, identify my secondary beams, right? I might have some problems of member collision, but I have to deal with it. I don't have any other options, right? So let me just do it and uh, pause the video and do it, and after that, I'll resume. So once your secondary beams are done, you have to do one more thing. What do you have to do? Just select every beam, right? All the beams are pinned, right? Except this. Okay, this this is not pinned everywhere. All the beams which I've selected doesn't have any column to column connection, right? So what you do? Just uh, go and uh, click on beam spans, and after that, uh, here go to releases, right? The short trigger is showing you. Just make this end one pin, end two pinned so now they are pinned right for this selected individually end one is the bottom bottom to top left to right this is how it works right end one and end two bottom to top means bottom one is end one top one is end two right so end one is your pinned end two is fixed so that's how it works now it is done and you have this uh, you know beam right here this is going to create problems if you, this is not at the center. So let's click validate and uh, you know, validate. You should remember that if there is any problem of member not supported, this is not going to be a problem because now we have not given any thing. So we're not going to see this member will be external supported because it's going to see this, this one. Other if we have any intersection problem, we have right. I just have told you to so select this beam. Now you need to get rid of this. Select this one and this should be at the center, right? Select this, click. I've just clicked this point and put it here and click on this. So now the only the 
you know, uh, no, not supported is there, but other things are not there. So what is this? And let's we have not done here why this is element length is lower than the limit. What what this is? What, what this is the element length is lower than the limit. So let's see if this create problem. Then we'll see. I don't think it will create any problems. So just go to the bottom and click the structure window and go back to base. So right, we are there. Click on beams here. Just uh, take the beam option here, and we're going to go draw the primary beams here. Longitudinal, right? So there seems to be another secondary beam here, right? It's remaining. Click, uh, click, click, double click, validate, and any intersection problem? No, no intersection problem is there. Two short problem is there. Which element is there showing again? I think this one, right? Let me just do it, draw it uh, again. There you go. Now, now we are fine, right? We are absolutely fine now. So what I'm going to do? Take the beam. Like this what happened here? I think there's some serious problem here. I don't want this. Right. Take the beam. Okay, this one. This one and one is uh and one and two both are pinned actually. This uh, double click here, you can also do the pin like this. For this one, and one is pinned and n2 is and uh, one is actually continuous here. In the case, pinned and two is fixed. Problem we are having here. Take the beam. Take this beam size. Horizontal we are doing. It's always good to connect the column to column because it gives you a solid support. So most cases always don't collect the column to column view because it gives you a tie for the entire you know, structure. So never avoid that. In fact, I'm also going to add another secondary beam here. Right? I love to add it uh, here because you don't have any column. In fact, I have to make this uh, releases pin, but because why we are doing this because it will be better like in this portion there will be no not any snow in slab of course in this portion you can give slab such as the staircase okay uh, so now just to see the structure 3d and uh, validate no errors whatsoever in the validation process factory is 21 percent okay so next what you need to do is we need to go and create the first floor plan so we're going to go to this uh what is this let's create this go to this structure levels and go to my first floor. so in the first floor see i have the columns right so what i'll try to do i'll try to import the grid line if it works then it's okay otherwise you have to manage by manage, I mean I have to import the counter one and then you know work around that. There were 30 million things which I don't have I think, to do that. So let's try. What is the you know just going and trying? But as for my experience, it will not work. Like it has not worked till now. So that is that, that is the thing. So I'll just copy this and uh, maybe paste it. Name it FF2, right? So, uh, what I'm going to do just open the FF2 and uh, make it work. I'll just try a technique. Let's see. I take a line here and along this column, I'm drawing a line, right? Click on here, uh, escape. 
and uh, after clicking on escape, what I'm doing is going forward and select this. This right, and, uh, and after that, what I'm going to do is select this and uh, copy and uh, paste it here. Right, delete the line and delete this. Save it, and after you save this, just use the command dxf out and uh, name, name it ff. Save it. After that, uh, just go and go. Let's see if it works or not. Go to the dxf file, click on ff, click on open. Just uh, select the center line mm. This step only will know whether this will work or not, right? By layer. What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? What do you know? It has not worked also, but uh, not that bad. Not that bad because you can see here what happened. Uh, the columns center line is not at the center line, so. why it happened we have to do some research to find out that but i think if we are able to move the dxl then will be able to do something right but right now this didn't work if i can somehow measure so let me try to make it work right i don't know if i can do it exactly i cannot do it right if i can put it at the center Let me just try right grid line to construction unit. Right? Yeah, I think I'm wasting a time, so I don't think this is a good idea, right? Uh, just press control plus C. Get this over with and, uh, this FF2. Definitely, in this FF2, this is whatever drawn the center line in the counter plan. It doesn't, it didn't work. So, let's give it another go. Right? This is the last go. Let's try. Uh, I okay, I'll pause the video and try if it doesn't work. Then I'll just try the conventional method. Okay? okay, I'm just trying again because this works, then I'll not be able to show you how I did it. That's why I'm being a little bit optimistic about this. So I'll just this time I'll click these two grid lines and delete everything at the side. So delete select this and uh, select this and uh, select this delete. So I have my grid line with me, and uh, what I'll do at this portion, I'll just delete. These two grid line, right? Because these two I already have. So I'll select the entire structure, click on copy, take the center, and uh, place the center in here. No, uh, I think I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong. What what was there? It was grid line was like this, right? Okay, it should be at the center. At the center. So. Again, I'll do the same thing. Delete the straight lines. Delete the straight lines. Delete the structure like this. This time I'll not do anything. I'll just simply move. Move the center to the center. I know grid line is overlapping, so one and two and delete. 
right? This is overlapping. Oh, this is not overlapping. This is, as you can see, I have not placed it correctly. So these are the small things which you need to check out. That's why the problems are created actually. Again, select this, copy. The grid lines intersection, always select this and uh, paste it at the intersection. Then also, I think it's not perfect. Can I try it? Give it one more try. I don't know why it's not working. Select this. Copy. I think this time I've got it. This time I have got it right. I think that this here, as you can see, this is a little bit there. Here, uh, you see this little bit there. So it is okay. Right? Basic thing is it is okay. Just read it. And after that, uh, what happened? It's this and this, we have multiple. I think if you delete it, what happens? Right? Everything gets deleted. Okay, let, let it be multiple, there will be multiple, no problem. No problem in that. So now, once this is done, just uh, save this, DXF out, F2, save, and uh, go DXF, F2, open, uh, center line you want. And click on next. These two levels. Let's see. So, okay, it will not work actually because there are a lot of complications in this. Okay, let's just press Ctrl plus C and import the ground floor one, right? Import the Excel, the ground floor plan, and the center line we want. We want next layer. These two levels for this. So after that, what we'll do, we'll just uh, have to create the center lines. We're looking at the cat file now because uh, we're not able to import work with the uh, this thing. So center to center distance was this first. First of all, let's do the horizontal lines, center to center distance. So this balcony portion will not do balcony portion. So now no need to do it. In TSD, we don't have a good report of that. 3040 is this beam distance. So let's check out the distance here. If this doesn't, don't need this, not just simply select this and uh, grid lines. Select this grid line, hit it. For now, let's okay. This one I think we need and we'll go here parallel quick and uh, 3040, right? 3040 F2 F2 for function F2 3.04 right this we have created it's better if we just give the beams right now because secondary beams will be there otherwise there will be a lot of confusion right and uh, so for that we'll need this vertical beams as well let's see this one no from this one let's check uh, this distance of this one center to not given here any b center line let me give it here right so center to center of this 3.1 and we have another beam here which will come here for uh, one point one point four nine and this one we have another one 
5.34. So at 5.34, we have a beam. So let's check. I think this is it should be 5.34 measure. 5.345. Why this is 5.345 or 5.34? Anyway, this should be 5.34, right? 5.340. This is the center. Yeah, I think this is. I think this is at the center. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Just uh, select this. And, uh, actual grid lines, right? Select this grid line and delete it. So this ones as well. Let's just select this. Actual grid lines. Three selected. And these three also. Let's select. Control press control to select multiple items. Right. So five point three four is this right? Five point three four. The next horizontal line. Parallel quick. Select this F two or function F two. Five point. Just go to bottom. So that it appears. Move the mouse. Okay. Five point three four. Enter. So once this is done, I'll just uh, take care of the beams. Beam. I don't know what you beam will pass, but definitely not two hundred to three hundred. I'll go with three hundred into seven fifty. I think this is the minimum beam which you need for this to pass. Right. So that's why I'll go here. Beam size three hundred into seven fifty depth. So this is the beam size which we are going. Okay, I have not saved this right. So I'll save this. B three hundred plus seven five zero. Done. And uh, this beam. First of all, we'll see here. This one at five point three four zero. This beam is going entire one entire span only. So from here to here, this is one tie of the beam, and uh, the other beams. This is a column to column. So you need to give with the middle one. It is coming from here to here. Take the beam. Take this size. Beam given here, and. Uh, Okay, I think we need to make another horizontal line here. From here, uh, we can need to three point one. This was one point four nine. So this was one point. It should be one point four nine. Why did I mess up? Let's check. So it should be one point four nine from here. I just press Control plus Z. Select this. And uh, this actual grid. One item. Select one particular item. We need this, right? Uh, should be one point four nine from here. Select this. Function F two. One point four nine. Right. I move the right mouse to my left and then click on Enter. And then again, my next one is three point one from here. So just go parallel quick. And uh, here, function F two. Uh, three point nine. Move my mouse to left side, my left side on the screen, and this is done. Three point nine. Okay, not this is three point one. Sorry, my bad. So select this and uh, grid lines. Select only this, and delete. so this is three point one. So you have to be very careful in that function. Have to three point one. Move my mouse to the left side. Enter. So again, take the B and uh, take the size here. B seven. Uh, Three hundred and seventy three, uh, and here we want beam here like this, and uh, let's see. What else do we have need to give? So uh, need to give this another way beam here, and uh, another beam will be here actually. So for this, let's check the size. You know distance because I have messed up in distance a couple of times. 
measure. Um, measure this. Here, let's take it from here. Three point zero four, right? So this one I have got it correct. So I'll take the beam and uh, take the size. It's going to be seven fifty. Take this size and uh, do it here like this. Just press escape and let's check the center of this, right? Think it good. Let's see the center that will be better. This one also, just uh, let's see that this intersection that will be better, right? So uh, all this is done, and let's check for any other secondary beams here. Uh, I don't think in, there is any secondary beam in this portion. And let's put the next portion here for the remaining beams, right? Now, uh, if you come in this portion, let's uh, complete this secondary beam which you are having here. So from the one, two, three, third column, uh, we are having a secondary beam here. And, uh, the beam which you are having here, which is a secondary beam. Yeah, this is also secondary beam. And uh, another uh, beam which you are having here. Oh, this one. So this uh, three beams which we are having actually, I think this will cover this as well. So it's good. This is in one line. So we can cover this. So first of all, from the third column, 1.5 and 3.1, right? Third column from the bottom. So one, two, three, the third column from the bottom. Parallel quick grid lines. So to take two uh, things, that is 1.5 and 3.1. So take 1.5 function F2. Distance mentioned here 1.5, and, uh, and after that, uh, function F2. Just uh, delete everything which you have, and 3.1, move my mouse to the right, and then click on enter. So once I have done that from the third column, I'll just uh, measure the distances just to be sure in case. So 1.5 and 3.1, my calculations or my, you know, Whatever plan, this is correct, and uh, this is 2.415 from here. So I'll go um, take the grid lines, take it from here, and uh, here I have 2.415, right? So I'll just press function plus F2 and the 2.415. So once I've done that, just click on enter and click on escape. So uh, once you have done it, then uh, what we'll do. What we'll do, we'll prepare the secondary beams. So for preparing the uh, secondary beams, right, what we'll do, so we'll just have it here and uh, take the beams, take the size of our beams, which we know, 300 into 750 size, okay. and uh, after taking the size 300 to 750, just uh, you see the location from the cat file. There is one beam which is uh, from here to here. After the third column to the upper uh, row of the columns, see this exactly. And after that, we have another one, this like this. And after that. There will be another one which is like this. Similarly, I think we're done here. And in here, there will be another beam which will be here. And uh, actually, there will be a beam. Here, like this, which is also a secondary beam fixed at the uh, end two. And uh, here, like this. And uh, there will be another, yet another secondary beam from here to here. I think we can do it later also, but uh, let's do it here to here and another one from here to here. Similarly, here to here and here to here. These are some secondary beams. If I miss anything, 
Have I missed anything to check properly? And if I missed, so there is no problem. I'll do it later. So this one, and this one, this one, this one, all pin connections. I'll select this one, this one. Uh, full, fully pin connections, right? Fully pin connections. This one have one and continuous. So, so select this, and uh, for this things, you know, go to this uh, beam spans. Go to this releases and uh, both end one and end two are you know fully sorry pinned. And uh, for this one, end one is pinned and two is fixed, right? This one end one is pinned and one and two is fixed. End one is pinned and two is fixed, right? For these three, end one is pinned and two is fixed. And for this one and this one. End one is fixed and end two is pinned, right? Click on this pin spans and uh, go to releases. End one is your fixed and end two is your pinned, right? Go and select the beams and uh, select this 300 to 750. Now for the time for the primary beams, horizontal. Right. Vertical. How can I miss this? So there will be last uh, secondary beam which I have missed. This one. And one is your first of all, I have to do this and one bottom one is fixed and two is pinned. This is it, and let's check the centers here. Go to the center, this center, go to the center, right? Anywhere else where this might be a problem, here I think we have fixed, right? We had to fix this earlier. Okay, no problem at all. Just click on validate to have any member intersection problems. You don't have any, right? That's a beauty. Go to slabs. Already we have defined uh, slab portions, but some discrepancies uh, we are observing here. You know, they are not allowing you to put slabs in some portions here so this happens sometimes when this happens you don't have uh, anything to do right there is not much which you can do and but i think it has to do with this these two portions because if i just see here it is like uh, divided by these two beams so if i just uh, manage to do something with these two beams i think uh, I'll be able to solve it. I don't know, don't know why, why, how, and why, but I think I'll be able to solve this problem if I define the span in a better way. I don't know if this is if this it changes everything my guys this is experience in which you can fix the bugs with experience let's validate this validation is okay you can put the slabs anywhere now slab on beams and uh, just put the slabs doesn't matter it's one way or two way slab if it is i think some one way slab also may be there but one way slab is not designed here in the software and i am not I have no intention of designing in phd because not much economical slab design is possible here my guys so we'll go with uh, just providing loads right construction levels and this make this level two similar to level one click on okay and uh, click on construction levels make this as unique click on okay go to your uh, this uh, support and uh, this one just uh, select here and make this as your fixed right this fixed 
we want fixed supports definitely we want them fixed supports so once you do this your modeling is complete so you might be thinking that if you watch the tutorial now it's very boring yes my dear friend it's not that much interesting sorry to break to you but if you are you know just uh, serious about it it will become interesting i guarantee you that so go back to this structure base and uh, let's put the loads okay let's put the loads so now let's complete the loading part since the modeling is complete so let's go to load here and after going to load uh, you have to select the type of load from the bottom here just uh, go and uh, select the dead load here and uh, when you select the dead load the first thing which you are going to apply in the sprint level is the load of the walls so uh, i have made a video on how to calculate the load of the walls so i'll keep the video in the description you can check it out uh, this will be different for different uh, you know materials and different uh, types of uh, bricks which are going, are going to or masonry uh, elements which are going to use so this is the case and uh, for now i'm just telling you for this uh, 10 inch walls we are going to use 14 I mean, internal walls uh, you know the smaller ones the 5 inch walls or the 125 mm walls so we're going to use 7 and uh, for the parapet walls the walls in the terrace level we're going to use uh, you know the load of uh, your uh, four okay so this is the loads which are going to use the uh, for the building so let's get started in the base first of all i'll take that load here and uh, take full udl and let's go and uh, give the internal elements of the five inch wall first for this so we're going to need the uh, architectural plan because uh, that will be a kind of a reference uh, for giving the you know the five inch walls first so, so let's uh, take uh, let's you can see all these uh, walls here the thinner walls this internal walls of seven and uh, okay no other uh, five inch wall has is, is visible here so only this uh, portion of walls which are uh, beams which have this internal internal ones these are the uh, five inch wall loads so when you take a load of seven and uh, you apply it in here and let's check uh, whether everything is uh, okay or not yeah i think we have covered everything which have a load of you know seven and now some load of uh, before putting the load of 14 and there are some portions where there are not walls but i have prepared beams especially for the main ones so we can avoid those portions we can put the load in only those portions where we have the walls so we'll take a load of 14 here and uh, first of all if you check here uh, all the you know internal wa uh, external walls here check just go the down for drawing and yeah, you know, let's go. so all the external walls we have the load let me provide load on this this simply by yes. clicking can provide the load and uh, around this side as well the full capacity we have the loads okay so let's go and move in the right side right side also in this we have load and this also we have this also we have this also we have uh in this portion there is some portion this this portion in between this portion we don't have any walls so we can avoid that if you want so we put a load here here and this pan uh, only from the here to here for that we need to take util and uh, take the load from select this and select this right so they're very precise in giving the load here i'll take full udl once again and uh, 14 is selected already so here the full we have beam sorry wall and here in only half the portion we have the wall so again take udl and uh, from here to here right so this is the udl which i have taken and uh, here also full udl let's see what happens if okay, this one we have the full udl here and we have the wall here and here also 
and here I suppose we should have all that's why put secondary beams, right? So now we'll check carefully that uh, whether anything is left. Yeah, this portion is left, this portion and uh, this portion now from here to here. Take UDL, take load from here to here, right? So and then you look, yeah. So we are done here. Uh, I think we are done. Yeah, one more. This one is remaining. So take full UDL and uh, just put it here. Right on uh, this portions. Let me check whether it, this portion here. Yeah, this one is having a uh, full UDL here. I think this one. Let's check. Okay. So I think now we have uh, put you know all the loads here. So you have to carefully do it. It takes uh, time putting the loads also properly because you don't want to put any extra loads. Already we are you can check it from 3D view as well. This loads. So, and you can check that uh, the software also shows where the loads go to the lesser also. You'll see the lesser magnitude. You see that these are smaller than seven and these are the 14, they appear higher. So, okay, we have provided loads in this. And uh, since there is, you know, there will be the load, there, uh, there will be, you know, sand filling and compacted earth and there will be no paid slab. So there is no need to provide any slab or, uh, you know, any service load here or even a live load also. All these things will provide where we have slab in the next uh, floor, okay? So we're going to structure one, and if you have it access to structure one, you can also go to here and click on the structure uh, item and uh, just double click on this one, which is will open. Okay. So uh, first of all, I like to, uh, you know, just uh, remove the slab items from the scene content so that you know, I can work uh, in very comfortably. So then uh, we'll just uh, go and select a dead load here. So once the dead load is selected, uh, what uh, we'll do, uh, we need to take uh, this uh, fully wheel. And uh, like we had done in the previous case, what we'll do here also, uh, we'll just uh, put the loads of the seven inch walls, sorry, five inch walls or the 135 mm walls first. So for this, uh, take a load of your, uh, seven and uh, internal walls let's uh, open the uh, you know cat file for the first row right so internal walls you can see only this one has this one okay interesting this one is also an you know your seven inch wall but this one is a 10 inch wall so everything which is mentioned so just to do as per that i think uh, this one is a 10 inch wall this one is a sorry five five inch wall 125 mm wall this one is also 125 mm wall this one is also 125 mm wall the middle one is 10 inch right so and this one is we also have a thinner wall that is a 125 mm wall and uh, anywhere we have that i think here yeah. here we have that right in this pen and this pen, right? So once we're done, and let's uh, click on take the load as 14 and apply. So I guess uh, we'll apply on the outer first, and left side complete, right side complete, and bottom and uh, up also here along the periphery. We have complete 10 inch walls. So without looking, I'll just uh, provide because in the entire bottom span we have the 10 inch walls so this we have and now uh, i think here we have the staircase right so staircase only this half portion we have so this span we have okay let's start from one end because that will be easier right i'm checking the left end so uh, and in this portion, I'll have to take UDL and uh, take from here to here, right? This is how it is. And the remaining, I think we can do by full UDL. This, 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 and this. This is full UDL because it is along the full span like this, right? And uh, here, I have applied it double, right? 
no okay this says to only up to from here to here right here to here no need to provide in areas where you don't have uh, looks like we have two more seven inch walls here which we had missed so i think we'll just provide seven sorry five inch walls i mean load is seven thickness is not seven on full UDL once again seven yeah this and okay this and I'll take UDL and uh, take it from here to here right very good yeah this is the middle one is 14 again take full UDL 14 this one and this one right so I think we just finished with the top span and uh, let's come to the bottom here and uh, apart from this span I think all are you know all have walls right okay so in the top uh, I had made a modeling mistake if there is no you know cantilever portion here so what I need to do I'll just keep on escape and uh, let's see if I can delete this I can delete this, this one, and for this one, I have to take this node and put it here. And uh, let me just uh, okay, I'll just complete it and then see. Uh, first, uh, full, let me see full UDL and 14. I think here we have 14, that's why I had left it. And uh, let's see here, yeah. Here we have one, and here also, here also we have. Okay, here do we have the thinner walls? Okay, thinner walls over here, thicker for here there. So uh, take UDL uh, 14, 14 from here to here, and uh, take seven, seven. Again, click on UDL take seven and uh, just put it from here to here right i think we are good here right we're good so this is it i'll just uh, turn on the slab uh, slab uh, items here created one this uh, slab just click on escape one slab which you don't need now right Okay, so the first floor also we need to make this uh, adjustment. I'll just do it right now because later I might forget this. First of all, I'll delete the slab here, I'll delete the beam here, this beam, take this node and clip it here. So I think we might have some problems in validation. Let's check, just validate. And let's see what are the problems which are having. Member intersection, I think I can solve that. No problem. In base, there are two problems with member intersection. Let's go to the base. I think why did you have this member intersection problem now? Let's click anywhere else, in any window else, and then click here. Okay. I'll put a node here and for this I'll just put the node there this must solve that again validate model geometry loads dead load ml3 geometry of the member load is invalid let's see which one uh, I'm showing here let me check in 3D view, ML23. What is the what is the what is the load here? Let's see. Let's uh, check the load. So it's not showing where the load is actually.
I think there is a problem which uh, we have applied in UDL and then there is some problem. So uh, let me check whether they are going to allow to design or not. So first of all, it will take a load and just uh, take a random combination like generate. And uh, I'm just checking whether they will allow to, you know, do the design or not, or else there is no problem going ahead without solving the thing. So ML23 is the name of the load. So if I just put no, the load is in first floor or the, so it is ML24, right? So it's near that. And uh, it is probably, we have to find ML23, right? So I think the structure base, turn it into 3D. And this is ML26. This is ML25, this is ML12, this is ML24, right? This is the one which is causing problem, no, ML23 is causing problem. ML23 should be around here somewhat, ML31. Okay, ML. okay so you have to you know find it out. There's also good that this problem came. If you ever have this, we can find it out. Or if there is, you cannot find it out, just delete all of them and apply it again that is anyway a better solution 20 so this is 21 this is 13 this is 78 i think it will be here somewhere so what is it ml2 it is 17 6 this is 5 25, 12, 27, let me find it, right? So I have uh, found the problem, if there any problem comes there, deleting the loads. Let's build it once again and see this in the member intersection problem. So let's solve this. I think, you know, if you fix the member intersection problem here, just click on any other thing and then click on any other team. So that's why, you know, this problem came because we had, you know, interfered with the nodes. So, just check on the model, everything is okay. We'll check on the loads. Oh, sorry, the Z. So this was the, you know, invalid load. This is ground floor. So let's open the ground floor plan and let's uh, check here. So we are good to go. And uh, if we validate now, everything is okay. So, and let's, you know, just uh, go to load and combination and design just to check uh, whether, you know, they're allowing us to design or not, right? Design, design or static. So, okay, this is, uh, you know, they're allowing us to design, so there is no problem. We'll check out the what is memory spelling and passing uh, later. So we'll go to structure one, and uh, in the structure one, that is the, we'll provide the, you know, your service load for the tiles or, you know, marble, whatever flooring uh, they do. So for that, we'll just take that load and uh, go to load and uh, go to level load and take a level load of one kilonewton per meter square one we are applying it here and uh, next uh, go for the import load import load residential building two we are taking and uh, after that um, there's no other load which is to be taken you can see the dead load from here import load from here and uh, in the top you can just apply the uh, parabat wall load take the dead load here take the full udl and uh, take the load of four just apply it along the
periphery. Like this. Okay, just uh, this in the staircase portion, just uh, remember you can apply here. Uh, I'll just take 3D view, that will better delete it. So here, this one I'm deleting, right? And take fully UDL. This I'll take 14 because in the staircase you have the you'll have the 10 inch walls only. This one. Okay, let's take full a little bit more. I will take that no problem. This portion I'm taking as a staircase portion, the full load, right? So this should be here. If you do it accurately, this should be here and uh, not here. This is extra. I'm providing this portion. And also provide uh, UDL, right? And also provide UDL, not uh, full UDL. Okay, let's do it. Why? You know, just uh, give an extra load in this portion, right? These three. These three actually. The load. It is difficult to select on the slab one. Okay, let's delete these two first. Load. Yeah. And uh, just go to this scene content, slab items is deleted, then I'll be able to load, delete this load easily. And take the UDL and uh, pick it up to here. Okay, take the UDL once again. 14 is selected, I'll select this and then double click here. Take UDL once again, select this and then double click here so this is the load and uh, okay another uh, UDL take this time take four start from here and double click here and this also you can do similarly take UDL start from here double click here so like this uh, we have provided all the loads here and uh, this imposed uh, dead so dead and import load have been provided here and uh, after that, what you need to do is just uh, validate the model. Validation is okay. Uh, go to your loads. You have to provide the earthquake load. The building is at a seismic zone five. So doing as per the Indian codes. Ignore seismic below your print level. Not the level is structure B one zone five. Importance factor. If a lot of people are using there, the one or uh, one two. Otherwise, you can do one. And uh, model response vector analysis next. RC moment resistant frames and uh, select moment frame systems and uh, special moment frame system SMRF. Right, click on next and uh, take all the dead loads and live loads into consideration. Click on next and click on finish. Then uh, click on this uh, select operating next and uh, already listed methods are selected. No need to do anything else. Click on finish and go to combinations and just generate the combination. And click on next and then already invested combination is selected. Next, next, and click on finish. Click on OK. So after that, validate the model once again. Go to design and then design all static. Your design should be ready uh, after the analysis. Some members will pass, some members will fail, and uh, that if you have to you know do certain things to make them pass. So uh, you can see that some members are uh, failing here. So what you need to do is just uh, select these members, I think, yeah, select these members uh, which, which are failing here. And I'll just make them, um, this uh, depth, uh, let's make this depth as, I'll make them 600, and then let's see if it's passing or not, make 600, and then right click and then uh, design selection, static. So they're still not passing. 1.159. So, I'll, what I'll do, I'll just select all these three and uh, beam spans, and then just go here and uh, go to section here. And I'll do uh, this uh, 300 into 600. I'll just increase the breadth this time. Let's see uh, design selection static. Still, they are not passing. Let's focus on this individual member. Okay, then what is Okay, they're almost passed now. You know, I don't think I need to do this. I need to check selection why this is failing. 
in a debate for torsion. Okay, this can be managed. This check selection static, why this is failing. So I need, think I need to increase the depth of both this. And in the plinth, there is only this view, right? There is no, none other beam. Section and uh, this one, 300 is going to let's do this. After that, uh, let me just design this item individually, design the static. Still section is in it, but I can do nothing. Okay, I have not changed this. this section is not changed. Okay. 300 into 750. Right click and uh, design member. So it's passing only in torsion, it is filling. In two load combinations, it is failing. So we have to check what we can do here. So if I just increase the breadth more, will it be sufficient? If I do it, this 350. 350 is not practical by any means. Okay, 350, I have passed. I have passed it. Now I think you know I can if I check it, the raw reinforcement is not too much. It's only that uh, there is a lot of torsion here, so you need to give 350 size here. A lot of torsion is acting on it, right? 350 to 750. And then right click and then uh, check selection to design selection static. Still, it is failing in 350 also. It's failing in a lot of combinations. I think a lot of stirrups, I think it will pass. No problem in that. If I reduce the spacing. What can I do next? 400. Okay, now I think we have something. Ratio is okay. Seven three letter is seven point. Uh, so much load is coming here. I don't know why. Some things you can ignore, I think. This beam and this beam. In the first span, it is failing, right? So on the first span only, I think we can increase the section, right? Span, span one, span one, it is 300 to 750. So why don't you do it this 350 to 750, right? And here also, double click here. Size pen one. Why don't you do this 350 to 750 and click on open? And it is failing here. In this also, double click and uh, in this pen one. Why don't you do this as 350 to 750? Click on okay. Okay. And uh, let's see the columns they are passing. Check number. 832 is too much, right? It is, I already told you, uh, 832 is, too much uh, for that, uh, we are going to use 25 mm bars in the project. Let's see if, what the, the you can back calculate, but uh, they have a setting here. Let's uh, try to use that. Uh, good design settings for the column uh, vertical bars maximum take make this as 25 mm right click on okay design design of static let's see now 
I think I mean we might need to increase the column size for them and some as well. Let's check. Okay, so it told beams um, is still not okay. This this two we have to do a lot of things. I think video like there, but let me check the columns first. This columns obviously need to increase the size here. This is yet passing, and this is passing at 0 0.6 point six five four. Okay, these two. These four rather I wish to change the size. Okay. So this column tax 415 to 450 was the size here. I'll just change it. Uh, this breadth, I'll do this as a 600. Okay. So once this is done. I'll go design, design on static. Now it seems to pass. This one was failing. So let's check this column. Right click and check number. What is the reinforcement coming? Also 1025, it's pretty much practical. Go to review, check the ratio here. So the green is maximum. So if you check the, I'll check the maximum column. Those, all the other columns should be less than that. So it's pretty much practical design. And if you just uh, see the ratio, this beam is still failing 1.025. And uh, so uh, this case, only one thing which we remember to do is in the span one, we can increase the depth. So they're telling that 750 is not adequate here. That's why not passing. So let's do 800, 800 and uh, click on okay. And this one also span. Uh, I think uh, 400 is not required here. And what I'll do is 315 to 800 will be right. And for this also, this we give uh, 315 to 800. For this also, this is passing right. So I think don't think it's required anything else. Uh, in the ratio it's passing, so we can just uh, do it this as a safe safer site so no need so once we design let's see what are the results here go to review and check out the ratio here so now everything is passing in the ratio we are trying to you know just take uh, do it in other things as well but in the ratio everything is passing here let's check the reinforcement with the highest you know the screen is highest point line utilization ratio one particular beam then we'll know what have an idea of what are the other reinforcement 316 and 316 and then 316 and 316 so reinforcement is pretty much good the design is done and the uh, only remaining thing is how to you know generate the drawings and uh, also the pile foundations which you need to design here so uh for the you know foundation foundation part what you need to do, uh, soil test report we are having, right? Soil test report we are having. Let me just open that report. So uh, now this report has opened for you. We are going to use 22 meter piles and we will do 500 meter diameter. So 500 meter diameter, 22 meter piles, we are having a capacity of 42. So if you just open the calculator, I can open it here. So it will be 42 into 9.81. This is actually 412.02. You know, this is in kilonewton. This was in ton. So it was 42 into 1000. So divided by 1000. So it will be 40, 41.02 kilonewton. Right? So what you need to do now, uh, just uh, go here and uh, go to foundations and uh, then uh, just to open this uh, catalog. And open after opening this uh, catalog, uh, what you need to do is uh, just click on add, right? Click on you know, add and click on P1, right? And after clicking on P1, select this board. So after selecting this board, we are going to go with uh, you know friction pile, right? Friction pile. We are going uh, so this depth is 22 meter board friction pile pile capacity. We have already calculated it 412.02. Same in this to 4125.02, right? Here also 412.02, right? And after that, 
do need to change anything here click on okay click on okay okay just a uh, file cap columns just click on here this select entire thing right and then nothing to do just click on design file caps so you get the file foundation detail uh, even one file cap is failing here so you want to make it fast uh, this uh, file cap is failing and the files is okay uh, just uh, Override the depth here. Let's give it uh, 600 depth. And uh, right click and then uh, design member. Shear capacity actually is failing, right? And uh, direction also. So I think uh, for the safer side, let's give it 800 or 1000 even, right? 1000, right? And let's check here design member. Now it's passing, right? Could have given less. Let's try uh, 900. Right click and design number. 900 is fine. 800. Like this, you can go for the economical run, right? Uh, to give economical design. 800 is also okay. 700. Right click design number. 700 is also okay. So I'm going to stick with 700, safer side. Now, you know, if you just check here, 700 is okay. Design pile caps, if I do, let's see what happens. If, uh, yeah, now it is passing, right? See, beautiful green. Now, uh, just uh, take this uh, file foundation detail. And I'm going to generate it into output file. For that, uh, go to the foundation level, which is the, go to the structure window, bottom most level, right? And uh, after that, uh, go to draw, and then uh, go to this foundation layout. I'll just uh, select the you know, location of uh, my file and cannot, so I'm at my location, click foundation layout and save it. Uh, automatic name which it gave me and click on this save, right? And then click on okay. So once uh, you do this, uh, your file will be ready here with the foundations here. And, uh, and after that, the next important thing is your columns, right? So, column layout if you want then click on this general arrangement and again i'm just uh, going to give the give my location to it and uh, general arrangement and click on ok so the column details will come here the column sizes and once the column sizes come the next thing which you need to column details the column details uh, you have this column schedule click on all the types of the columns click on okay and then uh, just give your name or location okay now uh, giving your location column schedule save it as column schedule okay and then click on okay open it the column details will be here, right? And uh, you can see column details here. You can also copy this and uh, you know paste it here. That that one. So you can do that. So you have the column details, right? And the foundation details. So you have all the details. So pretty much there. And if you want the estimate of the quantity then you can go to report just uh, click on this material listing and then click on show report download a pdf of this if the results are out of date you just uh, need to go to structure and uh, design it once again and after that the it will it will do so just uh, go to pdf and click on 
results out of date okay this step go to design and design all static and results will be in date in current date should i say you know after designing the foundation it's good to you know just click on update here click on pdf and uh, pdf is saved anywhere so that's the problem now to, to, to save as i need to just give my location and a place browse give my location here keep everything in the same folder you know this uh, material listing i'll write material listing right this is material listing and the design uh, report if you want just uh, select this uh, design building design right building design this report you need right this design show report this design you need for submitting like so to check what whether you've done the everything correctly or not most of the members are passing or not so the same thing we'll, this uh, way you generate the design report and after generating the design report you will submit it along with your you know building drawings so the building drawings which have been generated here the same thing we will do here you see the warnings are also shown everything is shown here and the designs are also shown and the step passing also everything you'll have here after you submit the design report you you know might have to might what you might you should you know just edit your drawing because uh, you have to do the text sizes and everything as per your uh, format in which you are preparing the drawing so these things you need to do and after that you can you are ready to you know submit all the drawings so that are the things which you need can do in the tech cluster design so this is a long video if you watch till now i hope you have learned a lot of things stay tuned bye bye have a good day